<laughs> is that really true? No. Oh, here we go. Hey, Free trying to post what episode is? 15. We have Jessie in studio right now. She's about to talk to us so much. So we have what? We have Ari. Ari back in studio. We have yeah, Jesse in studio. Jesse, say hi to the audience. Oh, oh Jesse. <laughs> No, no, no. You put your bag away and then come back out and talk to us. I really don't want to. Don't be lame. Just have fun with it. The crowd is dying for you. Ah, Jesse. Ah. Oh, Jesse. Oh. <laughs> Our daughter is like disappointing us to like the nth degree right now. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Jesse, you're coming Saturday, right? Maybe. That's a yes. It better be a yes. Coming to both. Man, I've never been so disappointed in my life. All right, all right, what's up, buddy? Uh, you mean in the news? I mean, how does it feel back to be back to John Lee? Oh, uh, oh. It feels it feels very wintry. It's okay, man. You missed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It was like beautiful, and then the Gaussian cooled down today too. Let me see, okay, let me see what big stuff is in the news in the last, like, whatever, three, four days. This one is more relevant to talk to Abby. Han Boyu, it came out that basically he was involved in a negligent homicide case. For what? Which he was convicted. So he... How did people not know about that, first of all? He kept it a secret. That seems like it should be public record. For whatever reason it wasn't, maybe because they didn't come to, I think, a conclusion on the case. I'm not sure. I'm not going to say more than I know in this situation, but but basically, he ran a red light and ended up killing a passenger on a motorcycle who was trying to speed through a yellow. So he was definitely in the wrong. And then there, there was a whole bunch of weird stuff, and this is less in the record, but basically, like, he didn't want to go to the hospital to visit the victim, and then he didn't give a white envelope, and I'm not sure what the context of that is. And whatever, his father-in-law was ashamed or something, so his father-in-law ended up giving a white envelope for him. White envelopes are usually for someone who's passed away. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Anyway. Well, white envelopes, so in, in context for everyone, a red envelope is usually what you give in Chinese New Year, or if you're getting married, you give someone a red envelope, and inside it you put cash. And basically, inside of those things is basically cash, and it's just like a... Kind of a little... How much cash? It depends. That's the thing is, it's very superstitious. So if someone dies, I believe you give a white envelope and you give something singular in denomination. So like, for instance, if someone dies, you give an odd number. But if you, if someone gets married, you give a red envelope and you give... Sorry. Uh, are, we, are we... The volume. Are we singing songs? And someone... It, if you get married, you give someone a, an even denomination of cash because that means that, like, oh, you're together. It's two people, so it's got to be even. So that's kind of how that works. That sounds silly. Well, it's superstition stuff, man. And you're you're one of the more superstitious people I know. That's true, I guess. It is what it is. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I've I'm like pretty not superstitious, but like in Taiwan. I, I follow a lot of superstitions. Like, I won't write my... Especially my Chinese name. I won't write it in red ink. Yeah, me neither will I. I do all kinds of that weird shit, man. Yeah. So, for, for people who don't know, writing your name in red ink in Taiwan basically means that, like, you, you might die. Is that what that means? That's what people told me. It's, like, basically... And I've heard students arguing about this in Chinese. It's, like, they say, like... Well, your English name doesn't count because it only counts for your Chinese name. I wouldn't name. listen to any children's understanding of, of, of superstitions, course. honestly, because yeah. they all distort the truth. Of course, but basically they said, like, you know, they were just arguing about if it counts or not. They said, like, oh, English means like, doesn't count. But yeah, from what I understand, like, it basically means that uh, it's like a, you know, some sort of death sentence or that you're like, you're going to die soon. I don't remember my I don't remember my full English name or my full Chinese name in red ink, which is again it's very superstitious. But I don't know. It's just why why do it if I don't have to? Let's see what else is in the news besides Barbara Bush's husband. Yeah, the war criminal. You mean GW? 
Not G W G H W H W. Why 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 is he a war criminal? It's the uh, I mean he killed a lot of innocent civilians. It's the same thing with who did he kill? I mean he went into the it's the same thing as his son. He went into war basically on a unfounded premise. Which basically war? on something that was untrue. The the whole thing that Which he, war? Which he war? uh with the in Kuwait. That was an unfounded. I mean, I, I mean, I, I get, I get that it was there. There were some reasons for him to maybe go into that war, but the big thing that many oh, civilians died either. I don't. I think it was mostly just Iraqi soldiers. Yeah, but there was also like uh, um, when they were when the Iraqi soldiers were retreating from that war. Basically, he bombed them, which is like a, a crime. Like you, you're not supposed to bomb retreating soldiers. But anyway, like they basically went on there. They went into that war. Um, on the premise of like the testimony of the Kuwaiti, what is that called? The uh the Qu- Amir? no, Sheik, no, Monarch between Butterfly. between two two countries. What is that called? The person that goes the the, the person diplomat. Yeah, so the Kuwaiti diplomat to the U.S. Basically, his daughter was the one that did that whole like sob speech to the American people and was like, oh, like uh they were. The Iraqi people were coming out, uh, or these Iraqi soldiers were like coming out and and basically f- like taking babies out of incubators and stuff. I I don't know about the circumstances there. As far as I know, that I mean, it was it was mostly in defense of the Saudis. Basically, the Iraqis in, invaded Kuwait. I mean, this is kind of indisputable. So they invaded a sovereign country mm-hmm. who arguably was not a close ally, but the. The argument was that maybe they would continue and try to invade Saudi Arabia if they were left unchecked to try and... Because the Iraqi military at the time was in decent shape. Not, not great, but it was a... It was basically... It was a... It was a they're, the, they were formidable for the region. That's yeah. fair, but the claims that she made were totally unfounded and, cl- like, not true. It's not, it's not certain whether that played any part in the military action. But that so. uh, but the but the support from it within the US is is almost certain. There's no way like that the the US people support that war without that sort of thing cuz they push that Bush himself and many other people push that. They said repeatedly they would say, "Oh, like they're murdering these children. They're cutting they're bayoneting women and children and like innocent women with like Pregnant bellies are being bayoneted. Like, and none of that's true. None of that was accurate. So it's just. I, so you I think mean, they wouldn't have gone to war without that. Not necessarily, but that was one of the justifications for war, and it was completely false. It's the same thing as as WMDs. You can say the the fake WMDs that we 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 found in Iraq. Like, maybe we would have gone to war without that, but it still doesn't make it less true, and it still doesn't make it the fact that you push it any less like. Repulsive, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I, I that that's just the one thing. But yeah, I, I don't want to necessarily get bogged down. That I was just, I was, I was mostly just making, I'm just trying to be a shithead, basically. We actually talked about H W with Abby too. Mm-hmm. This is a, the funeral yeah. is today, so they just keep repeating it. But yeah, of course. Yeah, we, we we talked about this before. What else is going on? Manafort. No, no. Papadopoulos is in prison now. Serving his 14-day-long sentence. Yeah, that's long. Yeah, it was... Okay, so the circumstances with that, there was also news that with the Flynn sentencing coming up, that that the um, special counsel had released a memo to the court saying that Flynn had been extremely cooperative and that they recommended him serve no jail time with the maximum six-month sentencing guidelines. Yeah. And Versus they, the, they also... They also were... Um, quote. I heard. I saw a CNN article that, and and another article, maybe MSNBC, that was saying like he, they were recommending him for no for no sort of uh, jail time because yeah, he was like, time. because he had like he was like an honorable serviceman and blah 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 blah. blah. What I heard is that he cooperated in several investigations, but what I also heard is that his name hasn't come up in any of the indictments that have already been listed. So whatever investigations he may have participated in. It's possible that they refer to some some individuals that we are not yet known yet. What was interesting about that is that was in opposition to the Papadopoulos sentencing, where the special counsel recommended the maximum sentence, and that even though he had taken the plea agreement, he had been not very cooperative. Uh, and Papadopoulos had also made 
statements to the media, complaining about uh, aspects of the investigation, leaking details, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's interesting the the contrast between the two. Yeah. And then even though they recommended that he serve the full sentence, which was recommended in six months, he only served, or he's only going to serve fourteen days, of which he is serving right now. Fourteen days is a joke, man. The and fact that the eight, fact that like some fine, I think. Yeah. Like that. But the fact that someone like that is serving a 14 day fine, or uh, sorry, 14 days in jail. Prison. The four, the, f the fact that someone like that is serving 14 days in jail. Prison. The fact that someone like why that is serving that? 14 days in jail. Why, why do you say jail? Why are you changing it? What, am I saying jail and you're saying prison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. They just make the distinction somehow that prison is somehow more serious because isolated to an individual stuff. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, continue. Well, all I'm saying is I was trying to say it right so we could I could edit the podcast and so it would seem more streamlined. But now, look at the situation we're in. But yes, I mean, the fact that someone like that would spend 14 days incarcerated, to use a better term, and someone who gets a three strike rule or even just a first term in pr in prison or jail and they do it for some nonviolent offense that doesn't isn't destroying our nation well for him the i mean the the reason that the maximum sentence is only 6 months is cuz this is not a major crime his only crime that he was convicted of was lying to investigators not of taking part in any ex actual criminal act just being dishonest to investigators but I think being I crime. think that should be a much more heavily penalized crime I think lying to investigators should be I'm not saying totally you should disagree. I'm not saying you should spend your life in jail but lying to lying to investigators should carry somewhat of a sentence it does six months in prison for, for telling but he's people. spending 14 days in jail that's what I'm saying spending up to six months in prison for making a false statement to an FBI agent for instance that's that's extreme to me, even because like. So what do you what do you you think you should be able to openly lie to the FBI? I think if you make a sworn affidavit, then you perjure yourself. So I think it's it's, it's a different thing to lie to an investigator than it is to make to 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 perjure yourself in a sworn statement. So what? Why are those two things? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. One I, of them has has the legal expectation that you're telling one hundred percent the truth, and you've actually made a statement swearing that you'll tell the truth. The other is just, I don't know, I mean, especially with an investigation, sometimes you don't know the scale, you don't but know where it's but you going. Know what, but you know who it's going to, and so what, what, what do you think, okay, so for instance, what do you think the sentence for that should be? I think it's probably appropriate, honestly. You think 14 days is appropriate? I think, it's, I, think I don't think, I don't think the actual implementation in this case was appropriate, because I think, like I said, uh, with the council's recommendation, he probably should have served towards the longer end of the zero to six month term. Okay. And probably a higher fine. But I don't think, I don't think the maximum term in prison should go over six months for lying to an investigator. It depends mm -hmm. on the scale of the investigation. If you're talking about high crimes and treason. Well, that's, I mean, that's what we're talking about, basically. Uh, it's really hard to say, man. I think. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I, I, I don't have a good answer for you. I think simply lying is one thing. I think if, if you're lying to, in concealment of a crime, then that could that could get you into conspiracy charges. In which case, you'd be liable for more. Anyways, but, 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 but where is the difference between those two things? Like, if you're lying, intent to why, conceal. But why would you be lying? That's a good question. And and Maybe also, the burden also, of proof is lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but also like cl content. Or sorry, sorry. Intent is like a very infamously hard thing to prove because like and I'm, what, I'm not a lawyer, so no, I'm, I know, but like what one of my things is like um, get like we, both of us actually are are pretty for getting money out of politics, maybe to varying degrees, but probably somewhat similar. But to prove intent of like the reason you're giving this person is quid pro quo, quid pro quo is like it super hard to prove. Yeah. And so that it, it's the same sort of idea. So, I get, I get yeah, what you're saying. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like the, the these sort of intangibles are very very difficult to prove. So, but they should be. I mean, this is a, this is a court of law, and you have a certain burden of proof before somebody gets sentenced. Agreed, agreed. I don't, I don't want people like being sentenced willy nilly. 
Exactly. You don't want willy nillies. Yeah, willy nillies. You know, everyone knows that famous uh, legal jargon is uh, willy nilly. But yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. At the same time, I don't know. It's hard. For, it's hard for me to like feel that we should give these sorts of people a lot of leeway, and okay. and let them get off. We can't let them get off, but I think I understand your point that. In, in cases where they're not super involved in some of the more underpinnings of uh, fraudulence, that, yeah, I mean, it makes sense that we don't necessarily treat them as harshly as some of the other people that maybe commit some of these crimes. Well, it's judicial discretion, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, but the thing is, is this is where I get, like, uh, a little bit, like, uh, defensive, about some of these things is because we have quote unquote like you have quote unquote judicial discretion but you also have three strike rules and you also have minimum mandatory sentences yeah so that's where I get upset is like okay well yeah these these people may have not done that much but the f- the effect on the country that these people have is much more egregious someone who uh, committed a small offense and then another small offense and then sold what in the state would consider too much marijuana. And then gets put in jail for life yeah, over some marijuana offense. Yeah, laws are, are pretty... They're stupid. They're, they're fucking stupid. They're especially stupid because of how poor the prison system is and how little it does that. And the fact that... It, yeah, exactly. And the fact that, that the prison system is essentially slavery now. Because we're working these people... Some of these people are fighting California wildfires for almost no money. And then when they get out of the system... They don't get to work for the fire as a firefighter because they have a criminal record. But they can probably get it expunged later. Depends on maybe, the maybe, and maybe after multiple years. And if you have to wait multiple years to get your record expunged, and then you can be a firefighter, it may not matter. You don't have enough time. Some of these people are are fucked once they get out of the prison system. So that's 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 where I get a. I get frustrated and I, I say, man, if you're, like, the people on Wall Street that got golden parachutes, I think those people should be in jail. But we, we, we can move on to another topic, but that's, that's when I get, I get frustrated with that stuff because it's just like, you're treating the, the lowest rungs of society so much worse than the higher rungs of society just because they have money. So if, if I do some sort of drug crime the outcome of that because I have a good lawyer or because I have a public attorney that has 30 seconds to review my case before they try it is exponentially different. I feel like that's not fair. Sorry, I'm trying to kill mosquitoes. But it's just not fair. And not only is it not fair, it's it's unjust, which is our justice system should be just. That's, yeah. all, that's all I have to say is that our justice system should be just but it's, I, I think a lot of times it's not I concur alright so what other news do you have to talk about let me take a little peek well, the UN dares to lecture Taiwan on human rights they lectured Taiwan on human rights someone from the UN basically said that Taiwan shouldn't have put the gay rights the, the same sex marriage thing on the referendum versus you know not granting Taiwan, the right to exist as a country is, yeah. I guess, not a human rights issue enough for them. But yeah, the UN is a giant is a giant fucking overfunded joke. They've proved their incompetence over and over yeah. with how corrupt and like one sided everything they ever do is. Yeah. What is the UN, what has the UN done in the past like fifty years that's been productive, like? What, there are certain organizations like the UNESCO, like there's individual assemblies within the UN. I'm sorry, the individual groups within the UN, but I think the UN General Assembly, the organization by and large, has accomplished virtually nothing. Yeah. Besides I, being annoying. Yeah, I think I think getting to that point, I think you're right. I think it's it's the groups within it that sometimes come out and they they have good ideas and they push they create dialogue that's super important. But yeah. It's they don't care like they don't they don't push for people who are I was such a self righteous autocrats yeah yeah a hundred percent I I was talking to my one on one about this today he was like we were talking about the Gong Tao referendum yeah 
in in Taiwan. Not only we we talked about elections, and we also talked about the referendum, and we were discussing things like uh, not a, th the gay marriage thing was a big discussion, and this guy's a he's liberal. He's more liberal. He's a DPP supporter in Taoyuan, so he's he's pretty liberal, but basically. He, he was saying like the the government did a bad job of explaining the referendum and also join the <clears throat> fucking club. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, of course, that's what I told him. As I said, we we had a big discussion about he and he didn't dis disagree with me, but we had a big discussion about foreign rights groups in the international community, such as the UN and other and, and the WHO. And I, we, we basically gave conclusions. It's like, if you're going to say that you want to support the people, because a lot of these groups will come out and say, like, we want to support underfunded people. We want to support people that don't have representation. Then fucking support Taiwan. Right. Then fucking the support European, Taiwan. The United Nations. The WHO, World, World Health WHO, Organization. WHO, where's their credibility? Yeah. They don't really have much. Because what, what it ends up being is, Oh well, you know we we hold up China. Same thing with yeah. We need we need the Chinese money. Otherwise, yeah. we just we can't do anything. But you know maybe if they would actually take a stand and like have some some backbone, other countries would step in and help them. Yeah, maybe think, people would step in and help them instead I, of you know the the nonsense funding they get from from corrupt dictatorships, blood money. Yeah. So. Okay, here's here's a question I thought of when I was having this discussion with my student. So, do you think that like the PLA, the Palestinian Authority, should have should have some sort of status within the the UN? I don't think it matters. But what do you think? I I think the, they essentially is, do anyways. There are so many countries that basically talk like Syria. I mean, why why does Syria get to be represented? Syria is not a real state anymore. Well, that's Syria's that's, been fractured. So if Syria, so you can, can, but you can argue that against Taiwan. Taiwan's not is Taiwan a real country? Yeah, I, I I think that the I think the General Assembly is such a joke. Then why not? You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna let Syria talk and China talk, but Taiwan can't talk, then then yeah, why not? I. I I get, I get why it's annoying, but I don't think it makes a difference. And I think the people that are pushing for it, are the, for the most part, are just trying to make an issue out of something that actually doesn't really matter when it comes down to. It. But I think you, I, I think you do think that the calls of these sorts of people to the to the Israeli state, like the Palestinian Authority and people from Gaza, are. I think you think that they they matter to some uh, degree. Well, here's the thing. I mean, who I know it's I know it's more complicated than that. I'm not trying to. No, this, but. here's my issue with that. Mm -hmm. Your your claim just now. Who picks the representatives to the United Nations? Do the Gazan people? Do the Palestinian people? No, they yeah. haven't had elections in over a decade. That's a good. Yeah. So they're they're unelected dictators who everyone is calling on to step down. Get to pick their representatives. So it's it's the representatives of the dictators. Yeah, it's not the representatives of the people. That's fair. I just yeah, I was just I was literally just trying to get your your opinions on that because I feel like you're more educated on that subject than I am. But yeah, again, and to expound upon that point into Taiwan, 100% of Taiwan, Taiwan is arguably more democratic than the United States. Uh in some in some ways, like in in a big way of that is that a lot more people vote in Taiwan than the U.S. There's, okay, as Taiwan, as far as I know, and I'm not going to make any broad generalizations. Mm -hmm. I guess I am going to make some broad generalizations. Just do your thing. We'll, we'll clear it out later. Taiwan has got a lot of vote buying, as far as I know. There's the... How, what do you mean by vote, vote buying? There's a significant amount of cash payouts for people to go vote. Not only that, but a lot of people basically will exchange favors for votes that... The voting process is not neutral and democratic. Neither is the United States, though. It's not. Look at look at a lot of look at look at Georgia. Look at Florida. Like there, there, are, are, there are massive irregularities. No, for no, 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 sure. no, 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 not irregularities. There are massive voter purges in the U.S. There's Million not... millions of voters. Millions of voters were purged from the election, and then there are also things like there are also things like uh, encouraging people to vote because they're old so I would say those are procedural issues I agree with you those are negative but there, there's a difference in scale between procedural issues and even procedural corruption and fundamental anti-democratic 
behavior. Let's, I mean, vote buying voter is, purging is anti-democratic. Here's the thing, though. Letting it, voter purging can be remedied because people can vote file provisional ballots, and those provisional no, ballots, no, 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 there's a process for counting them. No, 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 but the people the, having the person in charge of the elections, the secretary having the I secretary of state who is up for governorship in charge of that election and able to purge the voters, that's undemocratic. So I don't, I, I, I think that you're being too kind to the United States and not kind enough to Taiwan. I feel I like it's if, institutional. If, if, you, if you were to call it in the middle and say it's pretty much even, I, I think they're both institutional. I think it comes from the top. I think that is institutional. From Taiwan is from the bottom. I'm saying that a, so a lot of Taiwanese people don't hold democratic principles dear. That's fair, yeah. yeah. Okay. Versus, there are, insta- I mean, the United States has, has been a democratic country to a certain extent for over 200 years. So, yeah, there are still lots of procedural problems. There are loopholes where you have issues like that. But these are things that can be remedied. They can be fixed within the system by institutional reform, so, so, by procedural fixes. So, so could the U.S. thing, though. That's not a fundamental value issue. I, 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 I've, I've not just... heard a long time uh, an issue in the U.S. of vote buying. That's outrageous. But not, but not vote, not vote buying. But well, you have the issue of money in politics, which is I agree with you. Can That's... be can be vote buying, and it's these are obviously it's you know what do you consider vote buying? But also, if you're if you're purging someone, how is that an institutional? I think that's fundamentally institutional if you're purging votes. Yeah, it's an institutional. I mean, it's an institutional so, flaw. I don't understand. But that's my thing is I I'm not I'm not saying one is better than the other I think they're both bad but I'm just saying what do you think is the I, I don't understand I'm what the level the of States, difference is the United States you can make very simple simple probably difficult to enact but legally simple reforms that would fix a lot of these problems as mm-hmm. far as voter purging as far as the rules for filing provisional ballots as far as what else money and politics it's a simple set of laws could could correct that much more simply than than trying to fix some anti-democratic tendencies that, that are held. And Taiwan is a very young democracy, so I'm not saying Taiwan yeah. is a bad democracy. Democracy. I'm saying that it's it's new and some values still need to be inculcated. And I, I, I would agree with you, but I think you're you're talking about the, the ideology as opposed to the actual... Because yeah, because you I, could, you could also well, ideology is a problem, man. Yeah, yeah, I and I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm saying, to fix. I'm saying you could also make laws against... Vote buying. There are it's, laws. It's, against, it's, there it's, are laws against. Vote okay, buying. so just in the same as the U.S. and the same in Taiwan, implicating the laws don't mean that they're followed any more than they implicate. The United States they're generally followed. In Taiwan, there it, are laws in the books. They're generally not followed because of because of intrinsically held values. And okay, that's that's fair. But the the laws in America, I feel like, are equally hard to implement because because of the system that we set up. There's. The Supreme Court has upheld that money is speech, even though that that is an absurd argument. So, okay, so I, you know, I'm uh, in a hypothetical. I, I fancy myself a, a, I like to have sex with prostitutes. And uh, so, you know, I think maybe, you know, I want to have sex with a prostitute. And some cop comes to me and says, oh, hey, that's that's prostitution. And I say, no, 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 sir. Excuse me. I, I'm... I don't want to have sex with this prostitute, but this is... I want to give money because I think prostitution should be legal. So this is my free speech. Say we're a company. Say say we're Free China Post. Oh, Free China Post thinks prostitution should be legal, so we're paying a prostitute. As long as you don't pay her for an act of sex, then it's legal. But they're they're paying... How I don't, I don't understand how it's different from... You, you, you say you want someone to vote in a certain way and you give them money. Yeah, it's corrupt. Yeah, but, okay, the Supreme Court ruling actually, I mean, it, it applies only to super PACs. It doesn't actually apply. I mean, this is this is the confusing part about it. There are, there are still limits on the amount of personal funding that individuals and corporations can give to candidates. I'm per- yeah, I'm personal. So the ruling, I mean, the ruling versus the implementation is completely illogical. But there are still, there's, there, there are literally can't, Candidates that take millions of dollars from corporations, maybe over the course of decades with different campaigns. What's what's the upper limit? There, are, there are there are like I can show you. So okay, I did. I was looking at 
This is about Bob Corker. Um, let me look at the last person I, I, lo I looked at. Okay, so Stinny Horror. Stinny Hoyer. Yeah. Stinny Horror, who is the new... House Majority Leader. So Stinny Hoyer... Hoyer. In... <laughs> I'm not going to say his name correct, because I... Yeah, anyway. Stinny um, Hoosier. Stinny Hoosier. No offense to Indiana. <laughs> no offense to Indiana. In 2000, the 2017-2018, he raised over $3 million. So he's taking... So that's the thing is... If you take it from enough places, so like yeah, enough places. How many? But they, but he took it from okay. So from Exelon Corp, he took twenty seven thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Okay. From US USAA, he took twenty one thousand dollars. From Blue Cross Blue Shield, he took twenty thousand five hundred dollars. From Akin Gump at all, he took twenty thousand two hundred fifty dollars. So nobody from, took more than I, I get what you're but saying. But that's. The fact that one person, one company can give more than an individual is wrong. That's undemocratic. At its face. So if, if I as a person can give $100, it, the, the... Well, the idea of a corporation is that it's made up of many people. But it shouldn't matter. Then, those, should. individual, then those individuals should give money. We're talking it's about not should, a, then nobody should give any money, probably. But Yeah, absolutely. No yeah, one should give money. But it, it doesn't matter. If you want to argue... But, but the, ar the argument system. the argument for this thing is that the that when you talk about Citizens United, they argue that uh, corporations giving money to people is speech. So if I if I want to Not give my money to people, giving money to super to PACs. politicians. No, so, no, 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 no. Because this was ruling on super PACs, basically. Well, okay, no, I mean it it created the the ability to create these super PACs who could accept unlimited money, basically that. As long that their speech basically is not campaign speech, it's not qualified as campaign speech. It's speech in support of a campaign, but not in coordination with the campaign. That's why super PACs. But they're giving money, and so they're saying their money is speech. How is that? How is the difference saying, saying money is speech? They're using their money to to broadcast speak. to broadcast their speech. Yeah, so money is speech. So the fundamental idea of this is money is speech, is it not? I'm 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 actually asking. I'm not I'm not like trying to I'm not trying to say you're wrong. I'm that's just, how it's that's how it's portrayed. Yeah, I mean it's nonsensical and it's it's not. I mean they don't even hold that to be true. Like I said, for direct campaign contributions, there are still limits on campaign contributions. The 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 unlimited funding is only for non-campaign coordinated expenditures. So yeah, my my argument in was would be that. If it do, if it's not the same for the individual, it's not the same for for a corporation. It should be zero for everybody. How about that? One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I get on board with that today. It should be. We should have publicly financed elections, and of course, that's its own. That's complicated in its own right, but I think it's less complicated than saying that corporations can run an oligarchy. And how, how did we digress to this? We were talking about the elections in Taiwan, and but oh, we were talking about the UN before that. We're talking about the. Yeah, I think we got talking about the the differences in the relative level of democracy within within each company, or within each company, within each Freudian slip. Okay, so within talking each the country. The UN criticizing Taiwan. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the of course I hundred percent agree with you. The UN should not criticize. Well, the UN should not criticize anyone. It couldn't. It shouldn't criticize anyone, and it definitely shouldn't criticize Taiwan, and it definitely shouldn't expel Taiwan from any sort of body. It should. 100% allow Taiwan into every sort of body. and But it's the, thing, it's the same thing with the WHO. I wrote an article about the WHO not allow, allowing Taiwan and how that's literally a danger to the whole entire world. Yeah. I mean, it is. No question. It's 100% a, a danger to the world. Yeah. It's, it's absurd. We can talk about the China trade war stuff, but maybe if Kim's going to talk later, whatever, later this week. It'd be interesting to get Taiwanese people's perspective on that. Okay, yeah. So we're hoping that Ari's in the in in town for the next few days, and we're hoping to get Kim is supposed to be in town, but he's playing pool with his friends because he's a cuck monster. All right. So what else you want to talk about? I don't know, man. I'm I'm out of topics. You th okay? I mean, so, not of good topics. Just like small stuff. But. Let's talk. Let's talk about small stuff. What do you think? Do you think you think Trump's gonna get impeached? What's, what's your, okay, we're, this is just for fun. Let's have fun. What, what is your over-under on Trump being 
impeached slash taken out of the White House before he... I have no idea. It depends on depends on the. I don't want to hear no idea. Special I counsel. It's no, I, I don't care about logic. I just what do you think Trump finishes his term? Just like a just I mean complete speculative guess. Is that yeah, what you're this is for? this is. I'd say probably. Ha- that's why I said we're having fun right now. We're just speculating. I say 60-40. 60-40 He finishes or sixty yeah, forty. Sixty forty. He finishes. Hmm. Maybe maybe higher even. I think that even if there's really outrageous charges against him that basically by the time they would get brought it would be somewhere around mid 2019 to early 2020 and basically the the senate would just be like let the american people decide on this yeah. i guarantee i guarantee fucking to you if it was in 2020 that's exactly what they'll do well, 20, in, in 2020 for sure i'm pretty much on board with you actually cuz i have a, i have a lot of friends that are just like or or people that i talk to that are just like there's no way he can finish his term, but I definitely think he can finish his term. So, yeah, I agree. Because they don't, I mean, they're they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot because they're going to hurt their own base if they impeach him. I think it's extremely likely, unless there's some really, really egregious conduct. So, what, do you, what do you think it would take to get Trump out of office? I think What if, do you think it would, yeah, yeah, go ahead. If there's any clear... Clear signs that basically abuse of power, and I don't mean like abuse of, like, I mean there's lots of little abuses of power that he's clearly done, man. He's of used course. government money to like, to fund his own hotels, he has all kinds of, uh, he, he's given favorable treatment to lots of countries where he has business dealings, including perhaps Russia. Saudi Arabia for sure. Saudi Arabia for sure. If there was a clear case of abuse of power, especially with like a, an explicit quid pro quo, or something like that, a discussion where basically he agreed to give favorable treatment in exchange for some kind of financial benefit, then yeah, I would say that that would be grounds where the, even the Senate would probably be, and it especially especially if it came in 2019. The longer it gets, the closer to election time, the more likely the Senate is to just bucket to the election and just be like, you know, there's only another year. I mean, it's, it's going to damage them for the long term, but it's going to help their base because... Honestly, man, like you said, the thirty percent. Yeah. They're just like whatever, you know. He's a businessman. Like we we yeah. expected this. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I, I I absolutely don't think that he will be taken out of office before his term is up. I think. Yeah, I would. I would, I would probably. I might even go more conservative than you. I might say seventy thirty. Yeah, I said sixty forty or Yeah. More. Yeah. But I, what I'm saying is this, that forty percent chance rests on the fact that there's something really, really strong that's being held in these indictments. And that includes basically, I think one of Trump's kids, they're going to pull a very strong indictment on one of Trump's kids. And if that happens, the first fucking thing he's going to do is pardon his children. And that is good. That, that could spark it. If, if Donald Trump Jr. or something, it's, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I think that's definitely a possibility, but like, like you're saying is I don't think the Republicans care enough. I think that probably what will happen is that they'll just say, like... This is the Senate. I mean, the House doesn't matter now, because they've lost the House. The Senate is a little bit more moderate, I would say, because a little, it's more, it's definitely more moderate than the House. It's more moderate than the House, but at the same time, I think, I think that... They're, they're going to outlive the... I think they're also more corrupt, because they have six years in term. Like, a lot of these people, especially, even the Democrats, like, you look at, uh, you have Joe Manchin... He votes with Trump sixty percent of the time. I don't think he cares. I think if if you I, were, I disagree. If he, I think if there's anything, if there's anything that truly constitutes abuse of power, major abuse of power, I think they will vote to impeach him. But it would have to be major, and it would have to be clear, or they'll cop out. So what does that what does that consist of? Okay, I'll give you like a really clear example. Let's say with this real estate deal, basically. Let's say Ivanka Trump basically agreed with a foreign government. To lobby the president to push, you know, some kind of legislation on behalf of a business deal or something like that. A clear mm-hmm. case of, I would call that abuse of power or whatever. And and let's say let's say they charged her with conspiracy and she was looking at several years in prison. Trump pardons her, even though he he was also party to this kind of business deal. I would say that would probably be. I mean, even that is a stretch. I feel like I was gonna say I don't I don't think that I think that if Trump some some of them child. I think some I think I think some people will come out, but I don't think you get enough. Let's say he parted his he pardoned her before it even went to trial. 
So so what? How okay? So right now we have forty, forty eight basically, right? Yeah. Forty seven Democrats and Bernie Sanders. That's forty eight. Yes. I I don't know the numbers. I think I think I think Should the number right now is forty seven Democrats plus an independent, which is Bernie Sanders. So they'll all maybe maybe they will all vote as a block. So but say they all vote as a block. If that's forty, if that's forty-eight, which I'm, I think is correct. You still need four Republicans to flip. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Three. So I don't think do it's going to be hard because honestly, who, who, who do you see flipping? Though? Anyone who who comes from a hard conservative state that that's not necessarily in favor of Trump. Because if you look at what, what impeachment is going to do, it's not removing the Republican president. It's replacing him with Mike Pence for a year and a half. But a lot of the very hard Republican base. I don't... That's the thing is, I, there's been this marrying of hardcore republicanism with Trump, and even though he's not really in favor of a lot of their policies. It's not... It doesn't end up being... I get what you're saying. I'm talking about, like, okay, let's say a, let's say a Midwestern Republican. Okay. So, like, like a, an Ohio Republican mm. or Pennsylvania Republican. Yeah. Or maybe not... But, but Ohio is... Not Southern. I don't know, and not, not Ohio. Indiana is, is Pence, but yes. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Or a Western one. But not, I think, I agree with you. I think Southern has gone so culturally Trump. I think that they have a real affinity with him. But I think someone from any of those other places, anywhere except the South, basically, they, they could be like, yeah, I'll take Mike Pence for a year and a half. And whatever damage it does to the Republican Party is less than the historical damage that it, it will do to the Republican Party for allowing him to stay in office after such a clear violation of, of his, you know, of yeah. abuse of power rules. Yeah. That's what, that's my guess. That's a fair, that's, a, I feel like that's a fair assessment. It wouldn't take much. I mean, I, three people. I, yeah, I don't know. I just, Mike Pence I just, might even, I mean, he, he stands to gain from that. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. hundred percent. But and Mike Pence would probably flip. Honestly, he'd be the first to flip. And Mike Pence from the very beginning was ready to take after the Access Hollywood tape, Mike Pence mm-hmm. is like, he, you know, he wanted to take the ticket. He's yeah. wanted Trump out since day one. I don't know. That's the thing is, I don't know if they really care about the Republican Party. I think they do. I think most of them do. I think most, most of these people, man, they don't get to be a, a, a candidate for, for the United States Congress for their party without being a party stalwart. Hmm. But... Maybe, maybe that's speculation, but maybe. that's my, my opinion. I don't I don't I think they have some kind of history with the party. They've done they've done stuff for it for a long time or they wouldn't get chosen in the first place. But that's a guess. Yeah, I don't know it's probably a general rule as opposed to a, a fixed rule. Yeah, I don't know I don't know if I would totally agree with that, but yeah, I, I, I definitely see your point. I don't know. It will be interesting to see, but it's not looking good for Trump right now, and it doesn't seem like any of the Republicans are pushing back against him. Like there was the person against Bob, the Bob, Co- Bob Corker uh, just came out against Trump, basically, and said like MBS would be tried and convicted yeah. in thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I haven't seen anyone else come out and say like anything would happen. So I don't know. I, it, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to feel that that the Republican Party actually has any sort of moral groundings. What do you mean by moral groundings? If one of your one of your senators comes out and says it would be super easy to convict MBS, and then but no no one else is like defending that, no, and not all of your people are coming Lindsey out. Lindsey Graham, I mean, I think it's pretty clear, man. Based on, <coughs> based on the resolution that they passed, any support for the they or whatever pulling back support for the Yemen thing, I think it's pretty clear they're trying to make a stand. But I get what you're saying. Okay, so in 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 terms of Barb Corker. Uh huh. Let's let's listen to the Bob Corker interview, and and then we'll, we'll we can discuss this. I have zero question in my mind that the uh, Crown Prince MBS ordered the killing, monitored the killing, uh, knew exactly what was happening, planned it in advance. He, if he was in front of a jury, he would be convicted at thirty minutes uh, uh, guilty. Um, so uh, the question is, what do we do about that? Um, so far, um, it's unfortunate, but I think they, they feel like this is something that's come and passed because uh, the administration has not spoken to this in a way that 
uh, it, they've spoken to it in a manner that really uh, gives them immunity. And so what the message is to him and those around him is that you can go around killing journalists. So, yeah, what do you think about that? I think it shows that there's nobody wants to be made to look like a fool. And basically, I think MBS has really made the United States look like like fools, specifically Trump, and, and I think the Senate is just basically saying, we're not falling for it. And not that they're going to do anything, but they at least want to go on the record being like, you know, we're not fools. That's how I take it. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's a fair way to take it, but I don't know. I feel like it's just, how are we not fools if we don't do something against that? And I agree with you. I think we need to respond. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, even you know me, like, I'm not... I'm not trying to go to war with Saudi Arabia, but I think we should be as little interventionist as we as we can possibly be. But I just, I feel like this is another example of us just, like, when I feel like we just live in the upside down world. It's just, how can you be in favor of that? You can be in favor of MBS taking over his own country, like, basically doing, like, a, a, a soft coup in his own country. And then killing a journalist, and we we clearly know about it, and Trump has all... Like, so you have people like that, like Bob Corker, who I probably would agree on on, like, negative 6% of issues, coming out and saying, like, basically he would be convicted in, in 30, 30 minutes. It That's absurd to me. I just feel like that's where it gets to me, and it's just like people are like, America is a democracy. It's just like, I don't know. Is it a democracy? Well, what does democracy have to do with this? This is about how, how our, the leader that we democratically picked is dealing with foreign policy issues. Whether well, we that's, were, a, that's the thing is, we one, we didn't pick him as a democrat. He's not democratic. Based on the too. system that has been in place for since the constitutional reforms that were... So, formed. that would get into arguments of, do you think that this, this is a good system? And should we reform it? If it was Hillary Clinton, you'd be saying the same thing. You'd say, we. I, don't, I mean, who's we? It's majoritarian. I don't, I, don't, I don't like... What do you mean I would be saying the same thing if it was Hillary Clinton? You'd be saying that it was stolen from Bernie, you know? That basically, I mean... Because it was. Basically. I mean, the, the based on the systems we have in place. And you can argue but, against the systems, but it's technically democratic. But I would rather... Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I don't it's know. a way of the people selecting their leader, whether you agree with the procedures... But, <clears throat> But the but okay, so the procedures to select Bernie were clearly like my my argument would be: Do we make it more democratic? Or do we make it less democratic? I don't, I don't understand. Because the way one to pick Trump is less democratic. It's not based on popular vote. So should we base it completely on popular vote? Because because he lost by three million votes. So you think it would be more democratic to have a simple popular vote, but. It, it would, it, not, I don't know why you're saying, so you're saying, it literally would be, a hundred percent would be. If you had a popular vote, that's more Democrat than if you did some sort of this bullshit system where we say, oh, well, you got this state, and so you get this many points, and oh, you get this state, so you get this many points. It's, it's less it's democratic. It's procedural. I mean, it's procedural. It's procedural, but it's less democratic. Okay. But what, okay, what is that, going back to the foreign policy, what does that have to do with foreign policy? So what, what I would say in terms of foreign policy is, well, one, if you elected someone who is more democratic, I think they would have a better foreign policy. You say if you used a more democratic process to elect somebody, then the leader... They would be they more pick, representative. But that doesn't necessarily mean they might have a worse foreign policy. They have a wor worse foreign policy, but it might be more democratic. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to take the most recent vote, if you want to take the most popular candidate, the most democratic candidate, Bernie would have won. What do you mean by dem the most democratic? You the mean most the one that held democratic values. No, 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 no. The most popular candidate. Okay. So if you look at uh, polling, in the last this is speculation. Poll, no, no, no. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. Of course, every polling, but polling is drastically accurate. So it wasn't I, accurate. It was very accurate. I mean, it predicted that Hillary Clinton was going to win. But within the margin of error. Within the margin of error. So, it, it, okay, again, we can, we can have this argument, but it, it predicted Hillary would win. And, 
But the main thing that was against Hillary, or sorry, was in favor of Hillary against Trump, was basically opinion. It was pe- people taking the polls and saying, like the New York Times said, like Hillary has a ninety-nine point nine percent chance of winning. It's it's over overdrawn what I'm saying right now. It was like a ninety. It was like a 90% chance or something like that. And that's what you have that's that's not based on polling. It's basically they, what they think. Yeah. But the polling data was within the margin of error, basically. It was two or three points. And as you move closer and closer, they were. it was still right. They were As the night moved on throughout the, throughout the night, they were saying, oh, okay, so, so starting out, Hillary has a, like... She's up three points. Oh, now it's even. Now it's a dead split. Oh, now it's moving more towards Trump. Now it's moving more towards Trump. And you can look at how it moved throughout the night. It was pretty accurate polling. So if you think that the polling was inaccurate, you have two options. You can say the people that were doing the polling, which is mainstream media, are shit at doing their jobs. And so we throw it all out. And we don't think we can trust them in the future, so we throw it all out. What I think is that I think the polling, the real polling, is okay. It's not bad. There's there's mistakes made, and I think that in general the polling is is okay. And yeah, of course it's not perfect. There's there's obviously an an area of error. But what I think happened, uh, of course Bernie got screwed out of his seat. But look at the polling. When Bernie polls against Trump, even from that election, he was winning by almost double-digit numbers, depending on what polling you looked at. But what the, the reason is that, that, that Hillary lost is because we, we live in an undemocratic system. It, she got the popular vote. She won the pop Again, like I said, she Not won the... the first or last time that's going to happen. And, but it should be. It should be the last. In my opinion, it should be the last. Yeah, well, people were saying that in 2000, and what did they do to reform that? You know? But that's, that is, that's abs- aside from what I'm saying. It should be the last. We should reform it. But why are we not reforming it? Because we live in a very undemocratic, undemocratic system, and because people profit off us living off an undemocratic I system. I think with that, I, do, I, I think the Electoral College has nothing to do with profit. I think this is a lot of people who... Why? This is about... But this. maintaining the system has to do yeah, with profit. Yeah, status quo. Well, I don't... Has to do with profit. I don't think anyone... Pro- I, I don't think anyone financially benefits. Why? I think they do profit because if we... If what had happened in the last election was democratic, they would be doing worse than they're doing now with Trump's tax cuts. That's so speculative because Trump... It's, okay. You're saying that that people ahead of time that would I'm not saying people ahead of time. I, I, okay, I'm not saying it's is as conspiratorial as as that would make it out to seem. That's exactly what it seems like. But but I, I understand I understand what it seems like. But I'm saying that's just the common sense thing. So if you even if you had because the same thing if you had Hillary Clinton as opposed to Trump, they would still be doing better as opposed to Bernie. But if it was democratic. And we chose Bernie because he was the most popular candidate, and he's still, he's literally the most popular politician in America. It would be worse off for those companies. I'm not saying it's it's a grand conspiracy, because I, that's bullshit. Like, calling things like a grand, it's, it's Alex Jones-esque shit. It's just saying, oh, like, uh, this company and, uh, you know, they all got together and, like, blah, 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 like, they met up and they decided this thing. It's not like that. Like I'm not. I'm not going to argue that because I don't think that's true. But they know that if they pick the outside candidate, it, maybe even if, it, it, maybe even if it's from the right. Like if you if you picked like a Rand Paul, I think he would be bad for the United States. But he might try to pick off some of this, like these bullshit like tax deductions for these companies. But definitely, if you pick Bernie Sanders, he's going to cut them off for you because he doesn't believe in it. So that's, that, that is my basic argument, is that maintaining the status quo, maintaining the establishment is good for, for media. That's why I don't like CNN. That's like a, why I don't like MSNBC. Of course, that's why I don't like Fox News. But I think they're all, if they maintain the establishment, if you pick Trump, you pick Hillary, yeah, there's difference. There's a difference. And there's definitely a difference for the, the, the normal person. 
But if you if you pick Bernie and you allow Bernie to be elected, that's a big de- that could potentially, not necessarily, but it could be a significant detriment to your bottom line. That's what I think. Like, what do you think about that? I think that the reform of the electoral college. This is not like decided in a dark room. This is a matter of creating a constitutional convention, like the scale of which hasn't been done in decades. Like, there's there's not enough coordination, there's not enough bipartisanship, and there's certainly not enough will to do anything like that. So I think it's a non-starter to begin with. To, to reform the Electoral College, but there's still like a lot of corruption within the parties. I mean, look at the last election. like. Yeah, the only people that can reform the parties is members of those parties. And yeah, but high up members in those parties in general. You can say that about again about the electoral college. There's only only high ranking members can only the the people that are elected can reform that. So then we live in a system that's just basically perpetuating itself and just saying, well, the rich keep getting rich, and we keep perpetuating this self because you know only only people that have a financial incentive to reform this system will reform it. So they won't, because obviously they they don't have an incentive to do it. I think that's a it's a corrupt system. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to change. It's hard to change the the system, in quotation marks. It's not easy to change the entire system. That's the reason that I mean, that's the reason that we have institutions is to create stability within the system, make it difficult. Because if things were too easy to change, then nothing would be stable. So. I, I agree with, I like stability. I do, I do, I absolutely like stability, but to ingrain corruption within that system, I think is bad. And we've, it, it clearly has been ingrained, so what? I don't understand why we can't get that out. I, Institutional I, problems and okay. will. Actually, is, I, I understand, I understand why, but what I would say is I, for me sometimes I don't understand why you're not upset about it as, as much as I'm upset about it. I understand that you are upset about it, probably in some way, and you disagree with it clearly. But I just, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people aren't upset about it, and they're just like, "Yeah, well, this is like the status quo that we have." You can't get upset about everything, man. You got to pick what's important. That's most super. Important. It's super important because if we have this, the difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, it's different. It, it definitely is. I would you have definitely... to pick your battles, man, sometimes. And, f- like, for me, the more... I mean, there are certain important issues. And, for, to be honest, the most important things are the things that matter day-to-day for most people and the things that are actually achievable. Like, so, how, how do you think... Like, Help realistic... Help Medicare for All, for instance. It's but achievable. You, wouldn't, you would have never got that with Hillary. How do you feel... My, my, my question for you would be, how do you think that Trump would have been different from Hillary for the average person? It depends. On I know that's a complicated question. I, it's almost impossible to say because it depends on the Congress that was elected alongside her. If she but had, that's no, no, no. Say, say. If she had a Republican Congress, <laughs> then oh, it would have been very interesting. I'm not sure. The thing is, I don't, I don't think there would have been much difference, and and so even throw to Trump out of that. Say Trump. Say Trump. Gets I don't in. think there would be a big difference with Bernie either, honestly, because. Bernie talks a big game, but he needs a, basically a, a majority in both chambers of Congress in order to do anything that he says. And the likelihood of that happening again is not great. I think I think it is decent. I think in the next election, I think... I'm not throwing anything out. I think it depends on who runs and who the Democrats push and how much... It does, the presidency, he needs a super majority, not just a majority. He needs 60 plus votes. The likelihood of that happening in the Senate now, it, after the last 10 years, I think is almost impossible. Uh, see, this is where I would agree with you. I would disagree with you. Because, because especially where Trump has gone, a lot of Republicans have pushed against him. They've gone against him because they've said he's too far gone and he's he doesn't support what we believe in. Well, these people are just, they're not they're not really hardcore Republicans. They're basically just like saying like, you know, I'm pro-life or they're one-issue voters, whether that's pro-life or whatever that is. So I think when you push these people far enough, then they'll end up saying, okay, yeah, I don't really care. You know, if you're a populist, I think if you're a populist, then they'll say, if you're going to make my life better, that's enough for me. 
I you have to have a constellation basically in order to get this done. I get what you're saying. If you had really good candidates with really good stuff, but you need a constellation. You need a Democratic president, Democratic House, Democratic. But I think I, th- I think you will get that because look at look at the okay. So we got the House. There was there was a, so you might have what, whatever you want to argue. Like there was a blue wave. Like you want to uh, even it's not like a blue wave. Like whoa, everything flipped. But there were a lot of like. If you look at 538, a lot of those seats that they were considering like middle to like far right seats flip Democratic in the, in the House. The Senate is a different story because the Senate, almost all of the seats were, were Republican seats. Like look at, look at my state. Look at Missouri. Claire McCaskill, who won basically because the former governor was like a shithead and basically like fucked up his whole campaign because he was a corrupt piece of shit that it flipped it flipped back republican because she didn't know how to govern she didn't do anything she wasn't a progressive she didn't like give anyone any hope there was no hope with her she's a garbage candidate and so it flipped back because they basically when you run when you run republican light as a democrat and you you're versus a republican if i have the choice between a light beer and a fucking regular beer. I'm gonna choose the regular beer because it has better flavor. Yeah, Joe Manchin one. Yeah, that's fair, but but that's basically the only t- that's the only outlier. That's half of the half of the examples in this case. It's not half of. I don't, it's not half of the examples. It's literally one example in like you, in like of, we thirty have two examples here. So Out of the two examples that we gave, fine, we but us, we need to a know. lot of them still went Democratic that were Democratic, and a lot of the Republican seats went, to, went, went Republican. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, Joe Manchin still won. He was basically the only one, but he votes in favor of the Republicans most of the time. And I feel like that's because he puts on the air of like a... It's it's similar to Donald Trump in some in some ways. It's not exactly the same. He's not... Donald Trump by any means but he puts on this air of like being like a populist if you put on this air of being a populist I don't I don't think I think that you get a lot of votes people like that idea of populism because because look at okay so in West Virginia Paula Jean Swearingen she was a, a, a house electorate she gained like multiple multiple points you look at another Virginia Senate one of the West Virginia Senate committees, um, I can't remember his name. He's running for he's running for president now. Uh, but he, Richard Ojeda, was basically a candidate in West Virginia, and and he now he's running as a now he's running as a presidential campaign a candidate. He got he closed like a forty percent gap, a forty point gap. He still lost. It's similar to Beto. I, I wouldn't vote for him as a presidential candidate, same as Beto. I wouldn't. I wouldn't vote for either of those people. But I think that the progressive idea in moving the country forward is 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 very important. I don't know. That's that's basically where I, in my ideology is. I I just think that those people are more popular. So we need to move towards more of a democratic idea because they're more popular in certain places with certain people. I would say. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, but I've, I again, you look at Bernie, he's the most popular politician right now at all times. He's the most progressive. So I, I feel like that progressive ideology, and you look at, okay, so forget politicians at this point. Look at... Uh, I would say he's economically progressive, but he he doesn't seem super pro- as, as progressive on social issues. In, in what sense? I can't. I don't remember any specific policy th- statements he's made on immigration, on gay marriage. He's he's in favor of gay marriage. Well, most people. But are. gay marriage is already done. Yeah. So 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 what I was okay. So he's on he, he's he's in favor of. I don't know about an abortion. In favor of marijuana. He's in favor of taxing the rich. Yeah, that's economic. Any social. Okay, social issues. Well, but see, we we've talked about this before. What do you consider social issues? Anything that doesn't have anything to do with money. That's very. That's, that's almost nothing, though. Anything because to, you can you can say that, but like anything oh. to do with separation of church and state, anything to do with uh, 
LGBT kind of laws, anything to do with it's, immigration, but anything ba- to do with especially what I mean, he's he's in favor of like like so you're talking about gay rights issues, LBG, LGBTQ issues. He's basically in favor of that. So you you, you would consider marijuana like a a, a monetary issue? Uh, yeah, you could say that it's a social issue. Okay, so he's in he's in favor of that. Uh, he's in favor of ending the the illegal wars. Um, immigration, immigration is the big one right now. That's like immigration the number two issue, number it, one or number two issue for most people. Immigration, I think he has. So I, I don't. Yeah, immigration is a tough one. I don't know exactly like where the minutia stands because is it's a very complicated issue. But I would say he's probably in. He, I know he's in favor of a pathway to citizenship. He's not in favor of open borders. So that's obvious. I mean, almost anyone who's serious is not in favor of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but there are lots of there. There's in between issues that are more or less popular. So I would say he's in, in he's in favor of open borders. But again, I I would I would suggest people do their own research. Not um, not in favor of open borders. He's not in favor of open borders. Not. I, there are very few Democrats that are in favor of open borders. Like only fringe candidates would would probably be in favor of open borders. I'm trying to think of some other issues that he would be in favor of that would not be economic issues. But that's the thing is I'm, I I think a lot of it is economic and the social will follow because a lot of people are in favor yeah, of I think social, po- social policies. So e- economic, I get, again, he's, he's anti-money in politics. I think that is the biggest issue. Yeah. And he's in favor of that. Who else is in favor of that? Is Joe Biden in favor of that? No. Yeah, is any saying. Republican in favor of that? No. He's the only candidate that carries that because like lots of other candidates have the same message and are not nearly as popular. He also has some kind of charisma that pushes these issues. Well, but not only he, not only is he, does he have charisma, not only is he, but he's on the right side of it. So again, I would say number one issue: money out of politics. Twenty uh, Eighth Amendment. Let's get money out of politics. So. Bernie's in favor of that. I, I don't think there's another candidate for president in 2020 that can argue that. Hillary, no. Biden, no. Of course, any Republican would say no. Yeah, no, we were talking about, about Senate before. We, we, this is a diversion from talking about Senate candidates and whether liberal Senate candidates were or progressive Senate candidates were competitive, which was, again, a diversion from whether the United States could get a majority in the Senate, which was again a diversion from whether the United States could ever pass, it was li- possible for the United States to pass an amendment, um, I guess, modifying the Electoral College. Passing the, yeah, passing the Electoral College, maybe, I mean, I, yeah, how do you go about doing that is the thing. It's all, it, yeah, I, I don't know. Convention of the States. I'm all, I'm all for that. I yeah, mean, it's not going to happen because uh, uh, the states that would, the states that that would be necessary to do that would be the states that would stand to lose their standing if the electoral college was eliminated. Smaller states. Yeah, we've had we've had this discussion before, in terms of of we talked about Wolfpack and 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 getting money out of politics with the Twenty Eighth Amendment. It's it's not a lot. It's not a lot of states that are in favor of it, but it's it's growing, and I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna see what happens with that sort of thing. It smells like shit. I don't know what that is. Is the trash? Or is the upside? It's a combination of both, probably. It's not easy to change that sort of thing. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna just give up on it? I'm saying give up on it. I'm saying focus on what's focus on stuff that's reasonable. What do you consider reasonable? Though? Stuff that's that's likely to get stuff that has a, a reasonable chance of getting done. But if you have a president and a fucking senate that's Republican, what is reasonable to get done? Nothing, absolutely you nothing. Could, that that could change, but the the yeah, that could change. I don't know. I I just feel like if you're continually pushing for things that are quote unquote reasonable, then why not elect elect Hillary Clinton? You can push for other things too, but. I'm saying you can't... I mean, you've got to focus your energy somewhere. You can't be doing everything at once. I think you walk and fucking chew bubblegum at the same time. You just say, okay... It's not the case, man. When they legislate... I mean, Congress has a limited number of hours. 
considers a limited number of bills. But so what do they focus on? Constitutional conventions. You're saying you can, but you just said you can focus on doing one thing and focus on doing another thing at the same time. You can focus on a, a limited set of things. So what? what but I was asking, what are, what are those things? What do we focus on? What do you think we should? That's focus up to on? each person to decide for themselves what so, they, they think their important issues are. <laughs> Yeah. So I would say making the U.S. more democratic and fucking getting rid of the fucking Senate. I don't know. I I don't think it. I don't think that's the case. I think it's just we can we can focus on so many things and we can push for things. I think. I mean, we can, but, but of course we can post. We can push for anything, but I think why can't we encourage people to to move in the right direction? Who says we can't? It seems like you're just saying, well, we can only vote for what's pragmatic. I'm saying. I'm saying that when we push these issues, mm-hmm. Congress can only focus on so many things at once. The American people can only focus on so many things at once. I don't think the American... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if you're going to try to make a popular... I mean, these things would require massive amounts of, of basically popular action and movement to push for any of these pretty radical things. What, what, what pretty radical? Any of these would be a what? What any? What, any of these? Because I, er, early getting I money said, out of politics. First of all, the, I, I, the, a, a majority of people are in favor of publicly funded elections. Yeah, but uh, I mean, according the Supreme Court says that that's not constitutional anyway. So that's not even something that that's that's a Supreme Court issue. Number one, it's, it's, which is going to take. It's not if you keep pushing it and you get a uh, an uh, amendment to the Constitution. That's of course I agree with you. It is a, if you want to get the amendment. Talking about constitutional amendments, that is so far. I mean, the, we can barely pass budgets, and we've barely passed budgets for the past ten fucking years. How the fuck are two parties going to get together and create a constitutional convention when they, they can't even fucking close to seventy percent of government. people? Close to seventy percent of people are fucking fed up with. Like, close to seventy percent of people support most of the fucking issues that you talked about for this election. How many of them have been considered by the Congress? Much less starting a constitutional. How many of them have even come up for a vote? I don't know. I th- I think I think if you push that sort of shit on the local level, it's much more possible. Than yeah, you, but you have to have massive amounts of movement, massive amounts of people, massive amounts of money. So yeah, keep 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 fucking pushing it. I don't know. I, in the age of technology, I don't think it's I don't think it's as much as you need money. You then need how, less and less money. You need how less come and less money. Nobody is doing anything. How come nothing? There are people that are doing things. There are there are literally states where it's already passed. Well, what's already passed? Where const, where calls for constitutional convention have already passed. Five or six states have already passed it. For you talking about I mean, getting money out of politics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for pushing a twenty eighth amendment that gets money out of politics. Five or six states is small. It's small, but it's something. It's a movement, and that's the thing: is you have to keep pushing. It's grassroots. It's not this bullshit where you just say, "Oh well, uh, corporations are giving you money to do this, and so you keep doing it." Yeah, that's actually going outside. If you're if you're actually trying to use the states to create a state convention, that's going outside of the structure altogether. Of course, yeah. That's more difficult, though. What does that require? Forty states. I think it's thirty six. I think it's uh I think it's like two thirds. Yeah, anyway. I, I hope I hope it happens, but the original question before why why am I not like worked up over this? Like I don't know, politics politics is worth thinking about, but I don't think it, I don't think it's worth getting angry over sometimes. Like I mean there there are times when it's worth getting angry over, but you can't get angry over every little issue or just have a stroke. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I mean it affects some of us more than others, so I, I feel you can get angry, but you can't you can't be ang- perpetually angry. I yeah, I often get angry, but man, I don't know. It it yeah, I mean, it depends. It, there's certainly there's certainly you certainly have to take time to break. I agree with you. You can't always just be fucking pissed off, but there's a decent amount of time when I'm just pissed off. So yeah, I agree with you. It is what it is, and we've. Recorded about an hour and a half of us just being just debating again. This seems to always happen. Yeah, man. All right, I guess let's call it. All right, we gotta we gotta call it. Like, comment, blah blah blah. Yes. Do, do all the do all the blah 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 stuff. Yeah. Because we don't have we have like on on Facebook we have the most uh, 
likes. It's like it's not even a hundred yet. So what's going on, guys? Can you like and share to your friends? If you're liking our page, you're not listening to our podcast. What are you doing? It's absurd, borderline obscene. <laughs> and if you're on our Twitter, you're probably a bot. So like, ignore this. And on Twi- and on Instagram. 50% you're a bot, 50% you're not, and if you're not, why are you not sharing our stuff? Obscene. But regardless, if you happen to hear this, like, let us know what you think, um, give us some comments, take it into consideration, even if we think you're a doofus, um, but we'll definitely reply to you. We don't have anyone else to talk to, so... Comment, like, subscribe, blah, 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 you know? We appreciate y'all listening. It's, it actually does mean quite a lot to us, and uh, we love you. Right, Ari? Yes. Yes.